Many people have asked me, uh, you know, how you approach big lakes. You know, here in the West Kootenays, we've got big lakes. Kootenay Lake, Arrow Lake, Slocan Lake, like big lakes, 80 miles long, big, big, big. Well, you got to break it down into little mini lakes. And, uh, you know, in Kootenay Lake especially, we've got every kind of species you're going to get. Kokanee, rainbows, bull trout, uh, northern pike minnows, whitefish. You pretty well can catch everything in these lakes. So that's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly, COVID style. Not too bad actually, you know, I always wear my warm jacket coming out and of course I've got my my favorite life jacket now after I got uh, I got slagged pretty bad on social media for not wearing one. I always wear one now so everybody is well aware you can see me on the Columbia and out here. These ones I find are great. It's got the auto inflate, got the pull if it doesn't. It's excellent. So I'm just gonna start casting and what I've done it's come to an area that's fairly shallow. So I've got a depth sounder and I, I go and scout out the lake for big shoal areas that actually push out and stay, you know, up to 15, 20 feet. And then I'll work in shallower water and I'll work deeper water. And you want to find those areas because really when you get in the big lake, like it's 400 feet deep, like it's huge. So you want to stay on these nice, in these nice big shoals, find the shoals and work those shoals, the bays, even deep water bays in by shore and by the cliffs can be deadly. Like the, the cliff edges on these real steep drop-offs, go right into the cliffs and work those too. But I've got a beautiful area here and I always start, same pattern. You know, the I always start with bulldogs, full sink line. I'll explain a little bit about that as I go. But let's uh, take a few casts, see if we can't get you something. So I just drifted along and I found some now. I think this is, whoa, I think, oh, this is uh, definitely, definitely a kokanee. You can tell by, you can tell by the air time. Uh, rainbows do take to the air, but kokanee, look at that. Kokanee really go in the air. And the thing about it is kokanee now are so big in here. They're actually one of the, one of the predators. I'll show everybody this thing. Oh, man. Oh. Just shows you the size of the kokanee in here now. It's just they're as big as a rainbow. Yeah. Get the bulldog out. There's the bulldog. So they do eat the bulldog. Have my hands wet. Look at that. Like that is a, you know, that's a beautiful kokanee. I'm just gonna let him go. There he goes. And he's gone. And again, kokanee will eat that bulldog. So I had to go in a, I had to go in a little shallower water. So I drifted along them probably now in about, uh, what am I at, 10 feet. So that's what they like to hold. There's a little bit of current coming over. And a lot of the rainbows, a lot of the kokanee will sit right on this ledge, right on the, uh, right up the mouth as it pushes in. And there it is, you know, like I said, the bulldog, it's a killer. Any kind, the lake bulldog or Don's personal, they love them both. I'm going to keep casting. I know there's fish here now. And I'll show you the rod setups I use after. So I'm expecting black ant hatch today. It's that time of year. If it gets really warm and the conditions stay right, it should have some on the indicator. I also use a clear intermediate sink line. I'll show everybody with a uh, dies buggy prints when they want it moving a bit. Sometimes they don't want it static, they want it moving. 
But for now, it'll locate a bunch more fish. Full sink line, bulldog. And you know, you're getting, you're getting every kind of fish. It's just, it's amazing. Well, as I mentioned, just uh, gonna come out here and target some bows and some bull trout. And, whoa. and sometimes you get fish like this. And of course, this little kokanee is just going crazy. I'm gonna net them real quick. But well, that's what you get. I mean, you're not allowed to keep the kokanee out here. You can't target them. But you get a lot of these kokanee, and they'll hit the bulldog. Like, look at the bulldog. I'm just gonna hold them up. Look at the size of these kokanee. Look at there's just gonna show there's the bulldog just came out. Look at that. You know, there's a beautiful, beautiful kokanee. I'm just gonna let him go. There it goes. And the thing is, when you're fishing for these bull trout and the rainbows, especially late May, early June, it's awesome for the rainbows because they all kind of start coming back, you know, a lot of them spawn a lot of them are all fresh and chrome but you get everything in here so i'll catch northern pike minnows i will catch whitefish i'll catch bull trout i'll catch rainbows and of course i'll catch kokanee and they everything hits that bulldog i'll, I'll show you the fly and that's all i'm going to use you know i'll use this one for the majority of the fish today for the fishing i will pull out some bigger patterns like lunch money you know for some of the big bull trout when i hit some of those areas but that little pattern, these Dawn's personal version or the Lake Bulldog, just a killer out here. Like in, in May and June and even into July, that's all I use. And what you want to do, find those areas. You want to find the shoal. So I've got a, uh, um, a depth sounder and I go and look at all the bays. So this is a huge lake. It said the whole, this whole video clip is on big lakes. Like this is a monster. Kootenai Lake is a huge lake. It, you know, it goes up for, you know, 40 miles one direction, another 40 miles the other direction. It is a big piece of water, but you have to break it down into mini lakes. You got to understand what's hatching. You know, they, there's a lot of, you know, kokanee, minnow patterns that they feed on mainly. A lot of insect hatches. Not so many coronamids unless you find the little bays. You know, you've got hexagenia mayflies that are on the muddy bottoms. So you have to kind of break it down into mini, mini lakes and fish those mini lakes. But I'm gonna keep working this area. This is kind of the mouth of the lake. And I'll work down and hit some runs for some bigger boats. And yeah, we'll just hit a bunch of different sections. Should be, uh, should be most interesting day. Let's go through the setups you need. These are the three different setups I always use out here. Number one, full sink line. So type seven, type eight, like the fastest full sink you can buy. I think, you know, uh, Scientific Angler makes a real good type type six, seven that really gets you down. Airflow makes a great line that gets down in a, in a heartbeat. Short leaders, there's my leader length, five feet, that's it. I got thick pound test, you know, 12, 10, 12 pound test to your bulldog number one setup that's the one you need the most 10 foot rod easier to cast you know six weight 10 foot ideal second setup used the most is a type three something to get me down just a few feet type three is again short leader short leader four or five feet that's it max heavy pound test again down to my guys buggy prints again I, I like a nine foot rod for this because i'm not you know casting a little heavier fly but it's smaller don't need a 10 footer because it's only type three line. So that's your second setup that you want, you know, five or six weight again. And the last setup you want is the indicator setup. So exactly what you you'd, would use when you're chronomen fishing. Dry line, long leader, you can peg the uh, you can peg the indicator wherever you want. You can have it three feet down, you can have it eight feet down, 10 feet, whatever you like. But if we're fishing 10 to 20 foot shoals, you know, you want to be near the top, six, eight feet. So those are the setups you need. For fishing out here, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna work it for a little, a little while longer. It's getting late in the day. Had a smoking 
great day got every every species of fish today to show you so i'll give it a go for a little while longer and uh now that we got through the setup see if we can get one more one more big one for you whoa there's another one holy cow don't know if this is a rainbow or a kokanee but it's a nice one. Oh, oh gee whoa this thing is you got just a oh just a great fight i think it's a big big kokanee i think let's just check and see here yeah it looks like wow Whoa. and they want that they want that dice buggy prince moving wow and these are nice fish like this thing is this is a big coconut look at him dancing oh my god does it want to come up Jeez. oh my god why we a rod quite the fight wow Look at that, dies buggy prints. Right on the side lip, there's dies buggy prints. Look at this. It's all little, look at that. It's all a little, it's all a little kokanee. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Look at how big they're getting now. There he goes. So the kokanee, like I said, they're, they're becoming the predator. They are, they're getting bigger and they're just eating everything. Wow. I've gotten a couple of rainbows in here now and a couple of kokanee, so they're really mixed in. The kokanee behave just like the rainbows. They just feed on everything. Man, unreal. Yeah, the only thing I've caught actually so far on the wet method with dives buggy prints is kokanee. That's all that's hitting them. I don't see any rainbows rolling. Um, and that's all I've gotten so far. So I think I'll work this area. I'm gonna probably switch back over to my bulldog, work this area, try to get some bull trout out in here. Then I'm going to go back over to my other shoal and, and try it over there with the dice buggy prints and see if I can't get some rainbows. But uh, yeah, it's crazy. The kokanee, they're so big now, like pound and a half, two pounds. They're behaving just like rainbows. They're all over it. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, here's, a, here's, a, here's one of the nice bones. This guy's got to be in that three, four pound range for sure. Feels good. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a baby. He's a nice ball. It looks, yeah, it looks in that 20 inch range. Oh. And again, switched over to the bulldog. So whenever we go to the bulldog, I always have better luck for the bows. You know, I get a lot of kokanee, but a lot more rainbows. So I had to go away from dies buggy prints because all I was catching were kokanee. That was it. Oh, gee, that's a nice fish. Nice big rainbow. Show everybody. This is gorgeous fish. Oh man, what a bite. And hopefully, we can get this guy in. Wow. The thing about it, the water temperature is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, about uh, nine and a half Celsius, and they are hot right now. Wow. And these rainbows, right with the mouth here at the lake. Oh, so good. So hot. They're all you can get on a six way rod. Everything on a six way. Anything bigger than this on the six way, I don't know if I get it. That's why I prefer an eight a lot of times. Oh, this is nice. I just want to get it in. Sure, everybody is enough. Yourself. 
Columbia River size right there. This thing is healthy. Look at this. You know, that's a 24 inch net, 22 inch rainbow. Look at the size of that. That is gorgeous. Look at the big jaw on him. Wow. There he goes. Wow. Ooh. Unbelievable. That's what you get. Big, big fish, big bows. Oh, man. Well, I'm going to head over to that other side and I'll see what I can do over there. Well, that's it for the day. That's enough. That was a pretty awesome day. I got to show you all the different fish species. I mean, I caught them all. Of course, saw bull trout, uh, rainbow, kokanee, uh, northern pike minnows, and whitefish. All five. Like, and that's just in a, you know, a solid day. I got out here about 9.30. It's getting a little later now, 5 in the afternoon. Pretty solid day. And I showed you those different techniques. But, of course, the number one technique you're going to use out here is that full sink line. You need full sink line, big bulldogs. And remember, with big lakes... They're always going to feed on big food items like big lakes. Uh, you know, just some of those big lakes don't have the big hatches like you normally see. I mean, some obviously do have the chronomids, but these ones like uh, Kootenai Lake and Arrow Lake, mainly big food items. The fish are used to seeing those. But also know your catch, like identify the fish. So rainbows, uh, more spots, square tail, you know, big tail, just slightly V, spots in the tails. Kokanee, real silver. You know, the kokanee are silver. They've got really pointy mouths to them. They've got a really V in the tail, strong V. So remember, no retention for kokanee at all. And they want you to keep the rainbows and the bull trout out in the main lake, which is good. Zero kokanee and three bull trout and up to five rainbows. Two over 50, 50 centimeters, three under. If you want to see a bunch of our newest stuff, go to our website, www.sfotf.ca. You can check out all our new stuff, become a member. we got a great silver silver and gold membership uh, giveaway this month, all the major ones. Uh, this month, we're giving away Maui Gym sunglasses, you know, $300 value. Now, coming up soon, we're going to give away a $1,000 fly rod. We're going to give away $400 reels. Big, big prizes and giveaways on the site. So, when you're out here, take care, conserve our waters, and we'll see you next time when I take you sport fishing on the fly, COVID style. Cheers. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.